Carla and Brendan here from Games, Brains and Headbanging Life, gbhbell.com for short. Merry Christmas to you all. It's track by track time and it's Christmas album track by track time. We are looking at a band I've heard of. Uh, I've heard the name, but I don't really know their music. It is the animal in me who released We Wish You a Metal Christmas. Good God, that's generic as fuck. But considering when uh, how many others have albums in a similar vein. But that's the name of the album and it was released in... 2021 uh the animal me there are three priest rock bands who've been around since 2012 so this year actually funny enough 2022 is their 10 year anniversary and this album was released 23rd of november 2021 uh do you got any you got any relationship with this band no i didn't know who they were i looked them up a little bit and i saw the you know they were a rock band and i wasn't really particularly looking for forward to the album at first because i didn't really like like clock the title or anything like that i just looked them up and i was like oh they're a rock band I was like, oh, okay yeah. it's gonna be like rock band you know indie kind of rocky sort of stuff it might be all right yeah. but they surprised me when when i listened to the album yeah like a little bit um in terms of the style um not not i wouldn't say like blown away surprise like do you know what i mean but just a little bit maybe like for the first time like the heavier stuff happened, I raised an eyebrow slightly and went, oh, and, and then that was it. Yeah. But, you know, it was still like not what I was expecting when I kind of did, I read a few little bits on them and it was like you said, like a three-piece kind of rock kind of outfit. And I was like, oh, okay. Kind of had Great. more of a evanescent sort of new metal vibe I thought. <laughs> there are some aggressive, more heavier stuff here as well. Mm. My biggest problem was when I looked at the track listing and I saw what was original, what looked like original tracks to me and obviously covers the problem mm-hmm. is when I saw the covers and I saw the titles and I was just like, are you fucking kidding me? And it's the generic shit and one particularly that we'll get to in a bit. Gen- generic bar one, I think. Ooh, interesting. You might but, have to make, maybe... maybe for me, for me, the first track on the album oh, is not a song I've heard covered an awful lot. That's a very good point. I was just looking at my list in front of me and looking at which one might he been referencing, but you're right. The first track, You're a Mean One, Mr. Grinch. Now, maybe it's a bit more familiar because I think last year we did a mm. reaction to a band that did a pretty cool version of a this. Re- yeah, really, really good version of it, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, this is a fun one to start with and the vocals are the real highlight of this track. I get Christmassy vibes mixed with a nice, robust, heavy rock take with flashes of metal intensity. I like this as an opening. Yeah, I really like it too. I think it's a really cool cover. Uh, great vocals, energetic, nice little scatterings of heavy touches with the snarl, more angrier vocals. I think it works well. The contrast in between the clean and growls, good drums, plenty of catchy patterns, and a nice frenetic ending too. It's pretty nuts, um, but it's pretty cool. And it, despite the little additional metal touches, obviously it's a cover right so like you know that you, you kind of get a little bit of a, a a way with like you ain't got to chuck like too many bells or anything like that because you're doing a song that already exists in a format yep you know but you can i guess you could still fuck it like if you went to two to town on it and i still think it kind of holds like a pretty cool christmasy vibe still mm-hmm. so yeah i think it's a good cover i don't know why this song doesn't get like covered more to be honest the tw- two times now i've heard it covered i think that's the only two times i've heard it covered mm. um and both of them were really decent so yeah, yeah, you're right. It's certainly not one that gets covered a lot. There are plenty that do. We'll get to them. But up next is See You on Christmas Night. And I was like, is this an original track? I think it's an original track because I don't really recognize it at all. It's a bit dramatic, but when it heavies up, heavies up, it can be quite exciting. The highlight is the very catchy chorus. Another one I like. It's a little forgettable. Nothing too, you know, wild or like out there, but it's decent. Yeah, I, I have the same issue like with you in, in the first thing I wrote down was like, I don't know if these songs are covers or not. Yep. Like, you know, I was looking at the ones that I know are obviously a cover and then I was like, oh, this got like a couple of originals or are these all covers that I just maybe haven't heard. Mm. But, you know, overall, I thought it was an all right song. Uh, I like the heavy section. I like the clean vocals. I think the vocals are really, really good yeah. uh, on all sides. There's no, no, there's no issue with any instrument. There's no issue with any vocals. It all sounds really good. Yeah. This song, though, like, it was literally going, like, one direction 
for me and then they saved it really at the end because as much as i was enjoying it and the, as much as it's called see you on christmas night and it's got lyrics that say the word christmas it had no christmas feeling to it whatsoever mm -hmm. until they do that we wish you a merry christmas sort of rendition with the solo and everything yeah. like that. and then that makes it a christmas song and i was like oh, okay now i like it <laughs> up to that point i was like okay i think this is an okay song but is this a christmas song and then they did that and i was like okay save it nice well done animal me okay rocking around the christmas tree and here we hit uh the problems for me basically and this is not so much the animal me's fault other than them choosing to cover it this is one of those christmas songs that have been covered by just about fucking everybody that does a version of it. And for me, it's like there's going to have to be something really special to get my attention and make me ever interested in hearing this track again. This is not that cover. I've heard the same fucking rocked up version a thousand times before. Bored, other than the fact that there's some good talent in the animal me, as you've already said, good vocals and all of that, which are nice. There's nothing about this. The same melody, that same beat, the same tempo. No. I didn't mind it. Um, <laughs> I thought the drums are really good. The drums really stood out for me in this one. I thought they had like a lot of meat in that to them. Okay. So, you know, it, it's a cover. It's not a song I particularly enjoy. But, you know, like, it's that whole like, okay, you know, if I'm going to listen to this song, this isn't a bad version of it. It rocked it up a bit. I thought there was some stuff I didn't really need to do, like going into all the roars and stuff at the end of it. Mm. That was almost like, oh, we've got like a growly vocalist here. He ain't done you shit did. yet. Like, I want to do something. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like that. It's like, oh, do roar at the end. It's like, actually, it didn't need that. You could have just like left that as it was and it would have just been an, a, a bang average, but an okay cover of the song. Oh, fair enough. Can't stand it. I can't stand It's not my most hated Christmas track, but it's up there. Not too old for the holidays. The intro to this track is banging. The instruments and Christmas vibes hit so nicely. It kind of reminded me of some of August Burns' red stuff. It, of course, does, though, become a little more form formulaic, but it still has quite an uplifting vibe, and the vocals are brilliant on this. Uh, this is one of my favorite on the album. I didn't really get like too much of the Christmas feels from this one. Okay. Me. You know, I, I do like the song, but I didn't, couldn't tell like, again, if I was trying to like, you know, if I'm reviewing the album, I would have reviewed the song positively. But if I'm reviewing it as a Christmas song, I couldn't tell where I sat with that. <clears throat> I think the vocals are great. Strong uh, guitars and drums again. The song's got a really good flow. Uh, the chorus is pretty cool. You know, it's got a couple of bells, lyrics, obviously Christmas touches, but I just didn't feel overall it had a Christmassy vibe. But I did feel it was a very good song. And then we hit Last Christmas. As soon as I saw it on the fucking track list, I just went, oh, for fuck's sake, I can't stand this song. And I don't care for most, if not all, covers. Because, again, they all stuck doing the same thing, which is here's the same melody, the same rhythm, the same tempo. You all know it. You know the beat but we're going to try and rock it up and make it heavier to try and, you know, be more metal. That's what this track does. This is what the animal me does, but it doesn't matter. It's still last Christmas. And I know for a lot of people, you know, it's a big fan of it because it's wham and all that kind of thing. I don't like it. So I don't like the covers and I don't like this cover. That's it. Yeah. It's pretty much where I sit too. I hate the song. <laughs> Even a good cover isn't going to help that. And like, you know, it's that whole, don't get me wrong, if somebody forced me to listen to a version of it, then I'd probably go for this version of it. But I don't have to, so I just wouldn't. Yes. Um, you know, there are pros, again, in terms of what the animal in me can do. Mm -hmm. I think the strong vocal power, the drums are very, very good. You know, it's sung well, all that sort of, like, generic stuff. But I just ended with you just really can't polish a turd. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, a lot of that applies to tracks on this to covers. When something's already not that good or you don't like it, how the fuck yeah. can, you, what can you do to it? And they can't do much. Shouldn't wait for the holidays. A uh, nice rhythmic pace. The energy of this one is solid and is a bit more of a pop punk vibe to it at times. That being said, I find it pretty bland and even the chorus didn't really light a fire under me. However, I do like the egregious use of bells. So there's that. Yeah, I, I quite like the intro. I thought it was nice and bouncy, but I also just found this song to be immensely boring not long after the intro. Um, I didn't think there was anything wrong. There's nothing like wrong with the singing. 
it does have Christmas elements to it. It's all okay, but I just found it really boring. And I'd enjoyed the album up to this point, you know, give or take, like maybe the you know the covers, but I'd enjoyed the album. Yep. And then this one here, and I just felt like, to me, this was like a proper filler track. It's just like bang average at everything. Yeah, I agree. It's just bland. It's one of those. Um, it just yeah, forgettable as fuck. What Christmas means to me, the short length of this one really benefits it. And the energized instruments and punky spirit of the vocals works nicely. Uh, I believe this is an original track and I like it. Yep, I like it too. It's nice and energetic, good drum beats, nice flow to it. It feels very, very Christmassy. And even within all of that still has some nice chunky heavy sections. Uh, great solo and somehow the drums stand out as being the best instrument in the guitar solo <laughs> again. But like, it's still great. Um, you know, the only thing I don't like about it, and it's not that big a deal, but the one thing I didn't like about it, but I can just pretend it doesn't happen. And that's like when the song ends is about half a second of silence. Yeah. And then we get to hear the, like, you know, they've left the tape playing, like laughing and shouting and stuff like that. And it's like, I'll just cut that at the end, man. That just sounds stupid. Yes. Particularly when it's not the, like the end track is just yeah. in the middle of the album. Weird. Along for Christmas, the aggressive touches in this track work wonderfully, wonderfully for me. Again, I get August Burns' red vibes. They're balanced nicely with the rockier side and cleaner vocals. This is a solid track with a similar level of forgettability that exists on the album overall, though. Yeah, I don't mind this one. Uh, good drums, good energy, heavy sections are solid, good clean vocals. And I like the back and forth kind of vocals like between the two different styles throughout the song. So a nice enough flow to it. And I, I don't know if I'm right in the song I'm going to say here. Uh -huh. But solo, it picks up like a uh, more traditional like melody from a traditional hymn, which I think is Carol of the Bells, but okay. I might be wrong. Uh, but it's definitely one of them, but I just think it was Carol of the Bells. Okay. Um, which I thought was quite cool, just the way that that kind of came into it. And similar to how they used We Wish You a Merry Christmas earlier on. It makes uh, sense. It was a good way of making a song that maybe wasn't 100% Christmassy suddenly feel quite Christmassy when you get that. In fact, it's something that we both complimented Majestica on doing, you know, which is, you know, playing their solo and then all of a sudden it'll drop into a little bit of a familiar melody and then go back to what it's doing. So well played. Yes, Copy um, <laughs> uh, it is quite blasphemous to, to do that comparison, though. So I don't like it. I feel uncomfortable. It's, you know? Oh no, no. I just mean the idea. The idea. You know, yes. we got a song here. It's not Christmassy enough. How do we do that? Well, actually, why are you doing the solo? Just chuck into a, a familiar melody and then go back to the song. The only thing I would say is I didn't pick up on that. Right. I did not pick up on that. So I, I'm not. I, I'm not that you're wrong. Meaning that I, I believe 100 percent it exists, but I didn't pick up on it, which says to me it certainly didn't grab my attention. But I found it to be quite a forgettable track anyway. So maybe I wasn't paying enough attention. God rest you, merry gentlemen. Oh, look, I don't like it. It's as simple as that. It goes the fast paced punky route with blasts of metal, which just makes it seem so ho hum. Again, this has been done like this over and over again. Try something different. Make use of the vocal talent you have available to you in this band to do something fresher, more larger, grander, more interesting than just here's another fast, heavy version of God Rest You Merry Gentlemen. Boring. <laughs> Boring. Mm. I, yeah, I mean, I agree with a lot of what you're saying. You know, I've heard a lot of covers of the song. I think everyone who's covered the song has covered it well. Um, you know, but that just means like there's nothing left to do with it, really. Uh, you know, it's got there's not really a lot of difference between any of them. The problem is, is like it could be like like you said, it could be Halfords, it could be anyone doing a version of this. It all just sounds like the rocked up version of God Rest You Mary Gentlemen. That's it. So it doesn't stand out in that way, it doesn't have an identity of its own to go, mm. Oh, this version is better than other versions of this I've heard. It isn't. It's just another decent cover of a pretty sucky song. Which is, that's the thing we're kind of getting at people. Think about a song that's been covered, uh, a Christmas song, whatever, been covered tons and tons and tons. And then think of the best versions of those songs that you know of. 
that's what we're talking about. I've heard plenty of versions of Oh Holy Night. I have never heard a version as good as Rob Halford's version of Oh. Do you see? I mean, that's what we're talking about. It's that level of cover. You know, I've heard versions of E17 Stay Now. I've not heard a version as good as Raised by Out. Do you see? I mean, that's what we're saying. It's that. And when you get a song like Gold Rest of Every Gentleman like this, as long as like the same with Last Christmas and Rock Around the Christmas Tree, they just slip yeah. into the same pile of nothing interesting. We've heard it all before. And that's it. Almost. Because I, I'm about to say, there's not two versions of this album. It is all just one version. But we now just do acoustic tracks. We've got three additional tracks that are acoustic versions of what I think are the original, some of the original songs on this album. So we've got first up, See You on Christmas Night again, but done acoustically. And all I've got to say is this. It's simple. I actually prefer the non-acoustic version to this acoustic version. Well, how similar we can be sometimes. My first line, I think this non-acoustic version is better than the uh, original. Uh, sorry, I think this acoustic version is better than the non-acoustic version. Oh, the opposite. I think the clean vocals are good. I think the clean male vocals in here rather than the growls work really, really well. Um, and I think it feels a shitload more Christmassy than the original did. It's good. Interesting. Because what you just said there basically is everything I've written for not too old for the holidays acoustic. And I've written as good as the non-acoustic as the melody is great and the vocals really shine. It might be one of the more festively pleasing tracks on the album as a whole. <laughs> uh, we didn't, we, we, yeah, we, we lose synchronization now. <laughs> um, I didn't particularly love the original, uh, the non-acoustic version of this. Right, yeah. Um, I didn't hate it, but I just didn't think it had the Christmas one where I didn't really get the Christmas feel from it. And I just didn't think that anything had changed with this. I thought it's an acoustic version uh, of the same thing. And I got the same thing from it again. You know, I thought it's an OK song, very average, doesn't really offer much and doesn't feel very Christmassy, which is almost word for word what I said on the original version as well. Well, that's interesting because the final track is the track that we you called boring, I called bland. It shouldn't wait for the holidays acoustic version. And I wrote the non-acoustic version was bland. And this is no better. That's it. Yeah, I think uh, I kind of like we had three acoustics and one, one I thought was better, one I thought was exactly the same. And this one's kind of somewhere in the middle of that. Mm. Um, I think like, you know, like a lot of the stuff on this album, it's not about the musicians or anything like that. It's nicely sung. It's nicely played. You know, the vocalists work very well together. It's quite a nice style. Don't think it's very Christmassy other than lyrical content. I think it's a nice enough song for what it is. You know. It's such no. a shame that the this is our second of two track by tracks we're doing together. It's such a shame that we didn't manage to get something out of either of these that was just really like fucking hell. That was a real nice surprise. I don't think that's the case here with the Animal Me Wish and Merry Metal Christmas. I think it's overall uh, fairly decent with some standard stuff on it, but nothing that I would ever really write home about or proceed to listen to or add to a Christmas playlist. I think that's that's the biggest significant one there, that I didn't add any of these songs to my regular Christmas playlist. I don't update my playlist anywhere near regularly enough. It's only today when I realised I hadn't put the stuff from last year in it yet. Ooh. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I better add some of those the vandals and shit like that in there. Uh, um, other than, what, two Halford albums and two Majestica albums. <laughs> I thought I'd better put a few more in. That's all you need. <laughs> <laughs> but look, I mean, if, if, if I was to come out of this stuff with anything, I think the positives of doing this is more that I now know a bit more about the animal in me and I quite liked what I heard. So I'd quite like to hear then some of their non-Christmas stuff. Yeah. So, you know, perhaps a track by track in the future for us to learn a bit more from them. No, you're absolutely right. It's actually, you are, that's well put there. Um, it's well, worth, this, is, this has been fun to get to know them. And you're absolutely right. It's like, hey, I want to hear what their own actual music sounds like because yeah. the original songs in this are often the stuff that's worth hearing hearing i suspect they're probably going to be completely different on our top three tracks but i'll go first and drop mine in i have chosen not too old for the holidays what christmas means to me and not too old for the holidays acoustic version well we are are we completely different oh we've got one the same one the same oh it's what christmas means to me isn't it it is yeah so we, we both went for that um my other two are alone for christmas 
Uh-huh. And it is, where is it? See you on Christmas night, acoustic version. <laughs> um, interestingly, and I do think this is quite interesting, and maybe it's a good pointer out there for other bands who like write Christmas music. We both, on an album that has a mix of covers and original songs, we chose no covers. Mm. You know, so if, I mean, maybe that, that says something positive for the animal in me here as well, doesn't it? it I think. Does. Oh, that's all made. Yes, made me feel all warm inside. How crisp. <laughs> Um, that is the animal me wishing metal Christmas. You got any thoughts on it? You want to argue with us or tell us you agree? You know what to do. Let us know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked what you saw, please help us out by giving us a thumbs up and hitting that subscribe button. If you really liked what you saw, consider donating to keep the website and channel running by buying us a coffee via our coffee page or picking up some merch from our big cartel store. You can check us out on gbhbell.com as well as via our social media. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, as well as listen to our interviews via SoundCloud, Apple Music, and Spotify. Just search for GBHBL. Games, horror, and heavy metal. What else is life for?